Viennese Architecture – The Road to Modernism Vienna was home to an unrivalled number of intellectuals about the turn of the 20th century – Sigmund Freud, Gustav Mahler, Arnold Schoenberg, Gustav Klimt and many more. Architects were prominent among these and it is therefore no surprise to find out that Viennese architects played an important role in the development of modern architecture in the late 19th and early 20th century. I will describe how this played out by looking at a selection of key buildings, not all in Vienna, but all designed by Viennese architects. The Secession the Vienna Secession was founded in 1897 by, among others, the artists Gustav Klimt and Coleman Moser and the architects Joseph Maria Olbrich, Joseph Hoffmann and later Otto Wagner. It was called the Secession because it rejected more traditional historicist artistic styles. Closely related to Art Nouveau, the new style was also heavily influenced by the arts and crafts movement in Britain. Hoffman had visited Charles Ashby's Guild of Handicraft in Chipping Camden, while Charles Rennie Mackintosh and Margaret MacDonald exhibited at the Secession Exhibition of 1900, and their work was clearly very influential. The Secession Building The building which most clearly represented the work of the Secession was their own exhibition hall designed by Joseph Olbrich in 1898 to 9. It is noticeable for its large dome composed of golden flowers, but Nicholas Pevsner draws our attention to the rhythm of the three blocks which dominate the front view, which he describes as being as novel as anything designed by Frank Lloyd Wright at this time. Decoration in an Art Nouveau style is much in evidence on this elevation and the words Ver Sacrum, Sacred Spring, refer to the movement's magazine. In Germany and Austria, Art Nouveau was known as Jugendstil or Young Style and was more solid and less florid than the style prevalent particularly in France and Belgium. Karls Platz Stadtbahn. Olbrich was a pupil of Otto Wagner, who was a generation older, and who came to modernism quite late in his career. What is now preserved as the Karls Platz Stadtbahn station was built by him very much in the Jugendstil style. It was opened in 1899, by which time Wagner was 58 and had generally designed in a much more traditional historicist style previously. Was this a case of the master being influenced by his pupil as Pevsner suggests? Possibly not because as early as 1896 Wagner had already published his book Theses of Modern Architecture in which he had argued for a marrying of architecture and engineering in a new practical total artwork. The station, which served the underground Stadtbahn, was constructed as a steel frame clad in marble and highly decorated very much in the secessionist style. The Hochzeitturm, Darmstadt. Ulbricht left Vienna in 1899 to join an artist's colony at Darmstadt in Germany, founded by the Grand Duke of Hessen. He would not return to Austria and died in 1908 at the age of only 41. Just before he died, he completed another landmark building, the Hochzeitturm, or Wedding Tower, in Darmstadt, built to commemorate the Grand Duke's wedding. The brick tower has moved beyond Jugendstil, though there are still elements of decoration and Pevsner describes the five fingers at the top of the tower as characteristic of the restlessness of those who wanted to move away from Art Nouveau but were unable to make a clean break. He also draws our attention to the two bands of windows which wrap round the corner of the tower, 
probably the earliest use of a motif that would be much used by later architects. The Palais Stockley, Brussels. Roughly contemporary with Olbrich was Joseph Hoffman, who was also a member of the Secession. He had visited Charles Ashby at Chipping Camden in 1902, and this provided the stimulus for founding the Vienna Werkstätte, a similar style of craft workshop. As an architect, Hoffman's masterpiece was the Palais Stockley in Brussels, built from 1905 to 11 for Adolf Stockley, who had been involved in the building of the tram network in Vienna. This building is very different from the Florida Nouveau of Victor Horta to be found elsewhere in Brussels, which is very much in the French tradition. The Palais looks a much more severe and rational building, much more in keeping with Austrian Jugendstil. But the decoration is rich, especially on the tower above the staircase. Inside are mosaic friezes by Gustav Klimt, but, sadly, the building is caught up in a protracted legal battle between Stockley's granddaughter over its future and is not open to the public. The Post Office Savings Bank, Vienna. The Post Office Savings Bank in Vienna is regarded as Otto Wagner's masterpiece. It was built between 1904 and 1906 when he was in his 60s. Outside it is a highly decorated piece of Jugendstil, but it is the inside that gets all the attention. The cashier's hall has an elegant economy, free of any decoration and reducing its elements to its simplest form. The structural columns taper towards the base for structural efficiency and go right through the glass roof, which is supported on steel hangers, somewhat in the manner of a suspension bridge. This building can be seen as Wagner's most complete expression of the marrying of architecture and engineering, which he had proposed 20 years before. Goldman and Salach, Vienna. Finally, we come to the most radical of all the Viennese architects of the period, Adolf Loos. He was a fervent advocate of straightforward, unadorned buildings with no decoration. In the late 1890s, he had attacked the work of the secessionists, saying that to find beauty in form, instead of making it depend on ornament, is the goal to which humanity is aspiring. He described the plumber as the quartermaster of culture. His Steiner house of 1910 is uncompromisingly plain. His most famous work is Goldman and Salash, mainly because it is right in the centre of Vienna in the Mikhailaplatz, opposite one of the main entrances to the Hofburg, the royal palace of Emperor Franz Joseph, built in the Baroque style. Completed in 1911, it caused outrage, though looking at it with 21st century eyes, it's hard to see why. It is a plain but elegant building which relates well to the space around it. Decoration is confined to the stone facings on the ground floor and window boxes under some of the windows, quite lavish by today's standards. Inside the design is spare but elegant. The building is now a bank. So we complete the transition from the historicist ornamented style of the 19th century to the modernism of the mid 20th century as it played out in Vienna at the time of one of the most influential artistic centres of Europe, which makes these buildings important milestones in the development of 20th century architecture.